Nick, don't you dare. You heard Steph. Don't you Go do. ahead. I'm going to let you do the wow, honors. Dare you me. heard Steph. Light it. That's right. Light the beam. The freaking beam. Wow, I love this dare beam. You. I love this beam. <laughs> I, yeah, boy. A yellow <laughs> beam. A gold beam. That's much better than that purple nonsense we saw a couple a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Have you no respect for Chris Weber, <laughs> Vlade Divac, Tiny Nate Archibald, and the greats of Kings Pet? You're gonna dis okay. Patience what an there. outrageous I love this beam. Disrespect nice beam. for the for the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this is really what we're doing. No, now, okay. now we're going to Now we're going to be serious. Yes. Okay, good. Do you no, want we, to we... apologize to the Warriors faithful for for disrespecting one of the best players, yeah, all, one I, of the best franchises? That's how it works. Go ahead. I Where's will yours? apologize to one person and one person only. And that is Steph Curry. I will apologize to Steph Curry. I will not apologize to Warrior fans who were grumbling about Steve Kerr after game six, wondering if they let the better coach leave to go to Sacramento. They get no apology. Okay. I will not apologize to Chris Broussard. For what? I, Brew is a How facts, about a correct not prediction? a feelings guy. Well, it's very interesting you say that. Tale of the tape, who got Kings Warriors more correct? This guy or that guy? Check out that's, that's the tail of the tail. Hold on. So there, who is that guy? I'm, I'm just like, you know, Gru happened to get the winner right. I got happened? the length exactly right. And I said I got one game wrong. Gru and Warriors and five far off. Kevin Wilds. Should I apologize to Kevin Wilds? Kevin Wilds mocked me personally, professionally, on the air, off the air. Why? Because I acted like, hmm. The injury to the Kings' best player and the only person in the history of the league to win the Jerry West Award for the most clutch player only in the person. NBA. That is the only guy. <laughs> All of NBA history, one guy's won it. Jerry West didn't even win the Jerry West Award. That's how clutch the Aaron Fox is. That, hmm, an injury to his dominant hand might hamper him. Tale of the tape. Let's see. De'Aaron Fox, pre and post injury. How did he look? Well, pre injury, he was unguardable. Post injury, he couldn't stop turning the ball over, couldn't make a shot. And his yeah, that was the difference. Went up. His assist went up because he had to, more. because he couldn't shoot and he couldn't dribble. It's almost like the other team's best player got hurt. And now we're apologizing. I got to listen to Draymond, all these guys say, oh, bad sportsmanship. Yeah, people usually don't want to shake your hand after you try to collapse their lungs with your size 15 feet. So, no, <laughs> I am not apologizing. I do think all things equal with a healthy Darren Fox, the Kings are oh a better my, team. Oh my God. What do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? I've had to listen for three years that the Nets would have beat the Bucs if their best, if their second and third best player didn't get hurt. This was the Kings' best player. But I don't want to miss the forest for the trees, bro. The reason the Warriors won that. game seven, <laughs> which was a great game for a half and then a laugher in the second half, was because one of the greatest players ever, had one of the greatest games of his career. I don't know if I'm ready to call this the best game of his career. It was one of the best games ever of his career. It was the most – no one has scored – the only person to score 45 in a Game 7 win in the last 60 years is LeBron and now Steph as well. 60 years. In the man. last 60 years because when you see the – Guy, the, the most win, points, though, yeah, good, Dominique right. lost. Uh, uh, the, um, Durant, Durant lost, lost a couple years ago. Score, usually, LeBron once scored 45 and lost against Boston yeah. back in 08. So what Steph did was amazing. And I shouldn't have, I, I don't even know that I underestimated him, but I, well, I guess I did because yeah. I didn't think he was going to be able to do that. And he was awesome in the first half and he was even better in the second half. Apologize. No, I'm not going to apologize. I think I was on the right side of this. Got unlucky with an injury, and you know it. No, you I were don't. so nervous after game six. You're so no, lucky I you weren't on not. TV. Yeah, I read nervous. the text. You said they're not dead yet. That's all you could muster. What? Was Fair. not dead yet. They weren't, because you were nervous. celebrating. We're charging the beam. Yeah. And little Charge. emojis of a purple dot or whatever <laughs> the heck that was. We're charging the beam. Yeah. And I said, I stood wild. Ten toes. Ten toes down like Ten I always toes. do. Yeah. And I said, we are not dead yet. Yeah. I didn't want to gloat. I wanted to let you celebrate because we didn't have the show. You couldn't do the beam. Mm -hmm. I wanted to let you have your moment. But I was like, we are not dead yet. And Wilds, what was it? 
championship pedigree. pedigree. <laughs> you, you, you're teaming up. You have so, Nick, so many uh, all I heard. I don't know which one. All right, was every part, other this month part I heard. You got right. This part you got right. At, in, in December, they were 15 and 15. Uh, yeah. okay, they were. In True. February, they were 25 and 25. No, in March, they were 35 and, May, and 35. That's who they are. Games, they were 3 and 3. That, that is who they were. They won a game 7. But you they, were right. The championship pedigree showed up in game thank 7. You, you were right. Thank you. And you, you did give Steph his props. Steph's on we'll move. get to Steph. But it was even better than most people realize. Because, number one, he had one turnover. Yep. <laughs> 50 points, one turnover, and in, in all the way he was handling the ball. No teammate scored more than 17 points. Well, yeah. no teammate scored more than 17 points. I don't know if I'm putting that as one being That's awesome. big. Well, yeah. And it, well, here, how, maybe this will convince you, Wilds. Clay, Jordan Poole, and Andrew Wiggins combined to shoot 27%. That wasn't great. Your next three best players or scores combined to shoot 27. One of the worst big if he games doesn't go berserk, one absolutely. One of the worst big games I've ever seen. And I was, look, I, t- I want him to keep shooting because he can get hot, and he did hit, you know, he hit a big one here or there. But this was a phenomenal performance by Steph. And, and I, I think you've understood this over the years, Nick, but I think generally people have not. Steph's ball handling, passing, and finishing at the rim – has always been underrated. Like, we, we all, for the most part, recognize he's the greatest shooter ever. But I've said he's a top five ball handler ever, handle, and he's, he's a great passer. He doesn't get a ton of assists because of the way they play, but he's a great passer, and he is a, an awesome finisher. And people start to see it. Now, this looks almost relatively new, the, kind of the new George Gervin finger rolls he's doing, which are crazy. But he's always been a great finisher and a scorer in the mid-range. And people get kind of like Jordan. They used to get caught up in, oh, his athleticism and one-on-one play, that people just focused on that. They get with Steph, they focus on his three-point shooting and r- neglect to really credit him for all the other great things he does, particularly finishing at the rim. So mm-hmm. just – uh, obviously a historic all-time performance. Before, and I got to give props to Kevon Looney. Thank you. Before I got oh Kevon Oh, my gosh. Kevon you got Looney. something for him? Oh, okay, my good. gosh. He was awesome. Look, he wasn't they don't the, win without him. He wasn't the main star. He didn't play the main uh, stage at Coachella, but he dominated that second stage. So I think Steph's yep. obviously the story. But Kevon Looney on the court. Uh, they were plus 36. Mm. The offensive rebounds. I mean, he's just killing, get, kicking the ball back out. Oh. Guys are getting... Warriors getting two chances for a score, three chances to score. Eventually, you know me, Nick, I like to play the odds. Eventually, that's going to work out. For yeah. The, the, and it, Steph famously now gave this big pregame speech. Mm-hmm. Right. None of his teammates responded to it, Looney except did. for Looney. Okay. Looney. No, that's why. But I, right. Steph gives this speech talking about how if you don't believe you're going to win, don't, you know, don't come to the arena. He, and then Steph responds himself by not only a great game, but the 38 field goal attempts is a remarkable performance because that's not who he is. That's never been who Steph is. He's never been a guy that's shooting at that volume, right. but he knew his team needed it. The fact that Clay didn't have it mm-hmm. and Wiggins didn't have it and Draymond didn't really have it and Poole hadn't had it the whole series. Well, and we'll Looney that, yeah. found a way to just get them, and there is nothing more demoralizing I can't imagine what it's like playing against the Warriors in this setting. I know what it's like gambling against them. But when you get a stop and all of a sudden it turns into an open Steph Curry three because you don't get the rebound. And where I will say I was dead wrong on this series because I I think that the Kings earned your respect more so than they had it. And I don't think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. The the thing I got the most wrong, Wilds, was I assumed incorrectly that DeMontis Sabonis, his play would translate regular season to postseason. Nope. It not only did it not translate, it went so far in the other direction. Now, maybe part of that was he got his chest stepped on. He got, yeah. he got, a, he got uh, a black eye. Yeah. He was beat up. But he was outwilled the entire second well, early half by Looney. On, yeah, early on, and, and that's one of the big things yesterday, the rebounding, like, Yep. In the first few games when Sacramento was up 2-0, the offensive rebounds, they were killing yep. the Warriors. And yesterday, now I know they somehow they ended up with 14 offensive rebounds. A lot of it probably came yep. in the second half. But 
it was like Looney just shut all of that down, and right. they weren't getting second shots, and Looney then everybody was, was off, and that, that changed the yep. whole series. All right, and Steph then. becomes the 10th player in NBA history to score 50 or more in a series-clinching victory. He's the only one to do it in Game 7. He joins the likes of Jordan Wilt Barkley, more recently Katie and Giannis. Also joins Bruce Top 10 list. Top 10 all-time. End of discussion. From now, Milburn, Brew, New Jersey. I know you put a <laughs> period there. Yeah, South Orange. You We're Milburn. You I was well watching in location. South Orange. Hey, picture <laughs> you said end of discussion, but as you know, we want to open it up a little bit. Well, Top look, 10's a tight. So who's well, well, leaving this this was club? the point of the tweet because Nick will remember this. After they won it last year and he won his fourth uh, championship first finals MVP, I put him said in. he's in the top ten. But you admitted and, it was debatable. But most people didn't, right? Yep. And so this tweet was like, everybody else can join me now. Okay. It is obvious that this dude is in the top ten. And some people, Nick, want to write this off. Oh, first round performance. Jordan 63 that we always talk about oh, was in a first round yeah. uh, a loss. game and they lost. They yeah. got swept. And so don't belittle this because it's a first round game. This was a huge historic performance. But, yes, Steph is in the top ten. Here's my top ten. Let me see. Because I want to see time. who's out. The, yeah. Uh, so you got the big three, Jordan, LeBron, and Kareem. Okay. You got the locks that, that are in it, unimpeachable. This now is Steph is in there. Magic, the Bird, guys. Steph, Duncan, Kobe, Bill oh, Russell because so of the 11 one. rings. The pick one, Wait, yeah, I'm, get, I, 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 I'm, let, I'm allowing every – no, I, I no. Hold on. My guy is Shaq. Oh, you're leaving Wilt out. But – I'm I, I'm opening it up for people because I'm like, okay. look, like if it. depending on what your preference is, if you're like, and, and I get this, how in the world do you leave Wilt Chamberlain off with all his assault yep. on the record books yeah. individually, or if you don't, but he only won two rings. If you value rings, you're gonna go more with Shaq, and he's more dominant yep. recently. So. I'm leaving it up, but my guy would be Shaq if I had to leave one and off. Have it Wilt would be Wilt eleven, Akeem twelve. Yeah. The Wilt 11, yes. The Wilt 11. So the, I love that. I got to say, yeah, I think this great. is Thank a you. bit of a cop-out. What? What? Nice. I thought, I'll be honest, I thought I was going to get a 1 through 10, like numbered, because that is, because Brew, I agree with you. I don't, I, the. He's like, my, he's unimpeached. He's on the list, Nick, of yeah. who you're taking out. Like, he's, For, he's one of those, you're so, like, you can't take so him here's, out. So here's, here's the thing. And this is where I find it interesting. And I don't want to rearrange lists based on a round one performance. But it is not simply based on a round one performance or one game. It is not a knee jerk to a moment. It is a reaction to what I, an act of his career that I did not think we were going to get. Mm -hmm. When Durant leaves and they miss the playoffs without Clay, and then they have they still the next year they still don't have Clay, but they have Steph and Draymond all right. year, and they miss the playoffs again, and then last year they're seemingly wait they're they're back in the playoffs, but they're going to lose to Memphis. It looked like at different points in that series. It's like okay, Steph's now done winning titles with this core. The fact that they won last year. He willed them to victory now in round one. Road games have been their biggest issue, and now they have home court in round two because they're playing the Lakers, and they have the second best odds to win the title. All of that makes you have to reconsider everything about who's who in the NBA. So I like your grouping. Here's where I think Steph's going to have the strongest case, and then I've got something I want to show you. Yes, Steph is not the defender that some of those guys on his tier and some were. of them weren't great. No, but like Magic Dunk, and Bird correct. were phenomenal defenders. But his selflessness, leadership, and ultimate teammate stuff is that of Tim Duncan. Yes. And, the, and Steph is such a greater offensive player than Duncan was. To me, you can start to make the argument that offsets – the Duncan's you know, one of the greatest defensive players ever. That is the gap there. It is now a real. It is. It is now a real argument. Steph Curry or Larry Bird. Steph Curry or Tim Duncan. Steph Curry or Kobe Bryant. It has to be. Uh, and if they, it has to be. Uh, and so you don't think so? Steph or Kobe? 
Wilds no. has a soft Zach, spot to Kobe it's kind of, in a unique no. way. If he wins it this year, That's, it really becomes. But can I, can I show yeah, you a discussion. different thing, Wilds, that yeah, I, I think you'll like? And even maybe if, Magic. So, if all of NBA history had to be distilled down to one page, and you said, I'm telling the history of the league, the, there are only 11 guys mm-hmm. who you have to include. No matter okay, what, you, got Dr. you must, in, in order to tell the story of the league, so uh, Akeem's not on there, Moses Malone's not on there, Duncan's not on there, all-time great players, players that are better than some of these guys on this list. Sure. But you can no longer, Brew, tell the history of the league in any credible fashion without including Steph Curry. And there's only 10 other guys you can say that about. Of course, if we had more pay again, if you had more pages, more volume, you can talk, you bring in Durant, you bring in Giannis, you bring in a lot of guys. Dunk. But you can't tell the story of basketball without these 11 people. And he's one of them. And that, to me, is undeniable, Wilds. It's pretty good. I just it's a don't. good list. I wonder if, like, Bird and Magic should almost share... Wilt and Russell tile. could share, and yeah, Bird and Magic right. could share. And, and, and the, the, if people don't know, I'm the glad doc- you got Dr. J. In it's there an important he, part because there was a period of time where the best basketball might not have been being played in the NBA. Right. That's part of the NBA story, and so there is. He's now done. He's changed the game, and l- all those guys have not changed the game. And I do wonder, and I guess we can talk about this more l- maybe later, Wilds, how long he wants to keep doing this because. His mere existence causes panic in the other team Mm -hmm. and makes your offense go just by him being out there without taking a shot. That will last forever. That will last far longer than the handle and the finishing and all of that. So if he doesn't mind at 40, he's 35, at 40 being a, you know what I mean, not the go-to option, but just a part of a great team, he still could do it. Well, he looks like he's got... Two, three years maybe left as yeah. the go-to. Guy. But, yeah, I mean, a forty, just 40-plus 40 at 35 or older. Only seven guys have ever done it. He's now one of them. Uh, let's the talk playoffs. about the other side of the ball, the Kings. End of series drama via Sabonis, who ends the series averaging 16 points, 11 rebounds, one sternum stomp, one elbow to the face, and zero handshakes. Jeez. Draymond did not appreciate it. Yeah, but he also famously, after that lesson in 2016, wouldn't shake Tristan Thompson's hand and then talked about it at the parade, about how they're not cut, built from the same stuff, so that's right. why he wouldn't shake his hand. I will take lessons in sportsmanship from a lot of people, but I am not taking lessons in geography from Kyrie Irving and lessons in sportsmanship from Draymond Green. I'm simply not doing it. So, so but listen, Sabonis so did not acquit himself well during the series. I bet he was very ang- disappointed with himself. And Draymond stomped on his chest. Well, right so, and there was a good, there was a clip from the stands of yesterday's game of Draymond trying to coach up Jordan Poole and Jordan Poole blowing him off because Jordan Poole, I don't know if that was just a one moment thing mm. or it's still from six months ago. Certain things are tough to get over. And Draymond doing that to Sabonis, if Sabonis is like, man, I'm not shaking your hand. Right. I, and especially if he thought the loony thing, I didn't think the loony thing was intentional or no. dirty. But if he thought it was, he's like, all right, one guy elbows me in the face, another guy stomp, stomps on my chest. I'm not shaking your hand. I'm just not listening to it from Draymond. Yeah, I mean, so look, when you say that about the guy that you stomped on his <laughs> chest, come yeah. on. It, it's like Draymond, he, even if he, he might have shaken everybody else's hand and not yours. And, and you got to deal with that. All right, because what Draymond did obviously was dirty. And look, I get it, you know, this, but this is kind of like Draymond um, talking, to, you know, when he said uh, about the B word. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you can't call anybody that. And then you really, well, you called Kevin Durant that. You called LeBron that. You yeah. know, what are you talking about? This is the same thing. Do you respect LeBron? Yeah. LeBron walked off the court when they lost to Orlando in 2009, went to the locker room, didn't shake anybody's hand, and caught a lot of heat for that. Didn't talk to the media either. Mm-hmm. Isaiah Thomas Isaiah. did that against with, with Michael Jordan. That was still, <clears throat> still kind of a sore spot with them. Uh, Isaiah's told me that that's how the Celtics treated them. When they finally overcame the Celtics, the Celtics were, you know, they, they left the court. And so I'm not saying that is sportsmanship. I, yeah, you should shake the guy's hand. But am I going to join Gr- Draymond in losing respect for Sabonis because he didn't? Not at all. 
Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.